Hello guys, I'm Philip Magnus and this is my first World of Warcraft Legion video. Disclaimer, I haven't played WoW in quite some time. I actually quit a little bit after Cataclysm was released, which would mean that I haven't touched the game for practically four years. So then allow me to share with you my opinions about the first zone I went to, Azuna. In this zone filled with demons, Naga, Night Elves and a variety of other creatures, you will have to battle the Naga of Queen Ashara with the help of one rebellious uh, ghost-like prince by the name of Ferondis for one of the Pillars of Creation. Sound cool enough? I sure hope so. For me, it absolutely did. But that may just be because the Night Elf and the War of the Ancients was practically my favorite of all the lore of Azeroth. I have in fact read the War of the Ancients trilogy by Richard R. Nark for maybe three, four times ever since I was practically a small kid. So yeah, I have quite the strong feelings on this particular piece of lore. One of the reasons I loved Azuna so much was because it gave me the first in-game look I've had for Queen Ashara herself, the ruler of the Naga, and the Night Elf who originally made a pact with Sargeras, the Lord of the Burning Legion. Bad Night Elf, she is a very vain one, and in Azuna we actually get to see her shadowed Naga form and that's really exciting, isn't it? The reason why we are in Azuna in the first place is to find one of the pillars of creation, which will supposedly help us seal the Legion out of Azeroth and manage to stop their current invasion. So as you might have guessed already, a big portion of the Azuna questline is exactly locating and getting our hands on this pillar of creation. No surprise there, right? However, what did surprise me was just how deep the story went with Prince Ferondis, who apparently was one of the few subjects who were both close enough to Zinashari and loyal enough to Queen Ashara to actually defy her alliance, or rather pact, with the demon lord Sargeras. As you might imagine, this didn't go too well by Ashara. In a frightening display of arcane prowess, she wasted no time in punishing both Ferondis and all of his loyal subjects. By destroying the pillar of creation in question, an item by the name of the Tie Stone of Golgonet, she released a wave of dark energy over practically the entirety of the zone and all its night elven inhabitants. Which is why, since then, the elves of Azuna have been rather unable to experience the release of death. I know what you're thinking, sucks to be them, right? At any rate, the full story of this particular pillar of creation you can experience by playing through the zone itself. I'd rather not take that away from you, especially if you are looking forward to it. On to the next best thing. The Blue Dragonflight questline was amazing, I thought, and yes, that's what you are watching right now, by the way. I only recorded that bit. It was the last thing I actually did before I left the sooner. Anyway, why did I think it was amazing? That's a very fine question indeed. For one, it's a nice continuation of the events in Cataclysm, and it addresses the fallout of those events. Indeed, that with Deathwing's fall and death, the dragon flights were severely weakened, which does explain the problem I had to solve. And indeed, I had to kill a bunch of Nightfallen. Now, what are the Nightfallen? The Nightfallen, dear children, are night elves not only addicted to magic, but starving for it. They were, in fact, 
exiled from the highborn society, if I recall correctly, and were living off cut from the night well. Or was it the Well of Eternity? I don't quite remember the name of the source of magical powers in Azeroth, or rather arcane energies, as it were. I actually had a bone to pick with the major quest giver in this particular quest line. His name was Senegos, and he was a positively ancient blue dragon. However, my problem here is that, as far as I can recall, Back when Deathwing first made the Demon Soul, back then known as the Dragon Soul, he destroyed absolutely the absolute entirety of the Blue Dragonflight. And I'm just wondering, how does Senegus fit in that entire picture? How is he alive? Why is he the oldest? Because he he's obviously ancient. And I don't quite know whether that's... Uh, problem with continuity on Blizzard's part, or if they retconned major events, I just don't know. It's curious, I, it makes me very, very curious, and I would love to know whether the mistake was on Blizzard's side or on mine. But I think it was Blizzard all the way. Ha! Kidding, 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 please don't kill me, please don't send flaming poop to my mail. Right then, during the Blue Dragon Flight questline, there's a lot of talk about magical ley lines, magical pools, magical crystals which resuscitate and revive tiny little cute dragons. Oh yes, you can even get you can get a tiny cute blue dragon. I think her name was something along the lines of it started with an E Emirella? Something like that, maybe? Oh, I have no idea. No clue whatsoever. But that's, that's that. There was also this amazing NPC, which you start off by fighting against, then he surrenders. It's one of the Nightfallen. His name was something along the lines of Ryo or Reno. No, probably not Reno. I'm really bad at names, as you have probably realized by now. Anyway, that guy, he had the most funny voice actor. Like, they did something really enjoyable with the voice actor, and it was obvious that the guy who was acting his lines, I mean, who was reading those lines, he was having a ton of fun, and so that was a really memorable character. He starts off as the typical mana-starving Nightfallen, but eventually manages to fight this bit of himself and he actually is very helpful. It was a it was a surprising moment in the game. I did not expect to meet such a pleasant uh, mana starved elf. You don't meet those every day, do you? No you do not, sir. Not at all. Hmm, what else am I missing? There was a fourth quest line it started off well enough, it was about pirates, actually, and about slavers. A bunch of pirates were actually taken slave by giants. And you can, in fact, fight as gladiator for some of the giants. They don't at all realize that you are not one of the, well, pirates. And they quite enjoy the show you throw at them, but let's just say that I wasn't all that interested with this particular questline. There was, however, at the end of it, a certain letter to the Dark Lady, which, depending on whether you're Alliance or Horde, I suspect that you either safeguard or you give to the Alliance, if you're part of the Alliance, and that's a lot of information on the Horde's movements, plans, and so on and so forth, since, you know, now Sylvanas is the new war chief, Which really is an exciting time to be alive. I never thought she'd make it. I thought that good old Vol'jin would just stay on that throne until he died. Oh, wait, he did. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I liked Vol'jin. I think everyone did. 
but oh well. Blizzard killed him just to make Sylvanas more important. It happens, it's what Blizzard does. They love the, uh, their Sylvanas, right? Some other thoughts on Azuna, right, right, right. Well, there was an island with 110th level mobs, elites too, with a dungeon I haven't yet done. There's also the Eye of Azuna, which was quite exciting, I won't lie. I really enjoyed it. Five bosses, but I'll make a separate video for that one. What else? What else? Ah, yes! I just love how much attention Blizzard have put into tiny things, really. I'm only getting into this entire artifact leveling up thing, and I particularly loved meeting a Blood Elf NPC asking me about my weapon. Which, being a Fire Mage, my artifact is Fellow Malone, the Blade of the Blood Elven uh, Kings. That remarks on Strider, who was the first king of the Blood Elves, and later of Keltas himself. During Keltas's time, actually, Fellow Malone was strong enough to, according to Keltas at least, withstand even Frostmorn, possibly even break him, but that was never proven. The conversation with the Blood Elf NPC was just such a great small detail that really helped with immersion, with feeling like I'm not just one of a billion fire mages wielding Fellow Malone, but that I'm the one who wields the blade. It's just such a nice little perspective thing. I love it, absolutely yes. Oh, and there are a lot of treasure chests, treasure chests everywhere. And a lot of rare mobs, which when you kill, you usually get items which give you artifact power, which you use to level up your artifact traits. All nice, neat and logical. But my god, the treasure chests. I just love treasure chests, and probably I'm not the only one. They get me going. So excited. Yes. So, to conclude this entire video, now well into its 12th minute, let me just say that I really enjoyed Azuna. It was an exciting new zone with a lot of night elven lore, a lot of history presented, and it was just good fun. Oh, and I met a giant boss in the sea, and he killed me. He killed me dead. It was dreadful. I loved it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to me and I'll be doing more of World of Warcraft Legion because I'm really enjoying it so far and I really want to talk about stuff in it. It's, it's the first time I'm actually excited about World of Warcraft in a long time. And who knows, I may even get back to Pandaria and Draenor and just play those bits. Just enjoy them once I'm done with the Legion content, which is a lot, but more on that next time. Bye guys, thanks for watching.